All right, we are here at the Lesbian Killjoy Haunted House in West Hollywood, brought to you by a bunch of Canadians who are really too nice to be that scary. Although, we're in WeHo at a park. It's Friday night. Even getting here was kind of scary, so. My name is Deirdre Logue. My name is Allison Mitchell, and we are the artists who created Killjoy's Castle, a lesbian feminist haunted house. Before you come in, the anticipation is also an element of the haunted house, but there is Valerie Solanus who tells you exactly what you can and cannot do. So you meet, you're greeted by a women's studies, demented women's studies professor who takes you through and kind of helps unpack the complications of the spaces. You enter through the marvelous emasculator, which is explained as not being a man-hating kind of emasculation, but uh, more of a shaking up of gender roles. And then you go through the hallway of hand-painted signs that introduce you to the things that you may see within the haunted house. It names specific kinds of monsters, but also other things like a paradigm shift or cunt breath. We added the intersectional um, activist. You move through the party space, which is the Riot Ghoul and Gender Studies Professor Dance Party. And then you pass through a gender ambiguous hairy hole. Mm. And you can see there's a creature on the other side. And the creature on the other side is described as a dangerous criminal arrested by the LAPD's trans people and uh, masculine presenting women and they allow you passage into the next space, which is the graveyard of dead lesbian feminist ideas, organizations, businesses, newsletters, so on and so forth. And then you move through into the what we call the domestic space and a nest of polyamorous vampiric grannies. Avoiding hitting your head on the bloody bell hook, you enter into the straw feminist hall of shame where you are taught what a straw feminist is, and then you are whisked into the Stitch Witch's room where you, they explain their complex policies and politics around the connections between the war on drugs, needles, the prison industrial military complex, and its effects on racialized and poor people. And they offer you a sacrament uh, it's the end of your tour, your tour guide explains you are now about to enter into the Killjoy processing room where these are real life feminist Killjoys. You're encouraged to sit down with them to talk about your feelings. You can quickly exit through the last hairy curtain and into ye olde lesbian feminist gift shop that is presented by Other Wild here in Los Angeles. And then you can continue to hang out in the courtyard with the lesbian zombie folk singers and just keep asking if you'd like to hear one more song forever and ever and ever. As far as creating an intentional lesbian space, like I think it's an intentional queer space for sure that is very lesbian centric. Mm -hmm. It's a place of queer intersectionality that is not exclusionary or separatist, but it still is coming through a lens of experiences that we have through queer women's worlds. There's a, a genuine capacity uh, in the self-reflection that Killjoy asks us to consider. I think there's lots of uh, moments in that to kind of laugh at yourself a little bit and some of your hang-ups and misconceptions about what lesbian feminist politics might look like. I think there's some ruptures in that humor that actually maybe make feminism a bit more accessible. Okay, so I did some investigative reporting and I found out that this is actually an art project. Have you been through the house? I actually just went and it was uh, lovely. 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 Stunning. Uh, it, visually really nice. I enjoyed myself. You know it's supposed to be scary, right? <laughs> Was this lesbian haunted house more or less frightening than the possibility of Marco Rubio being president of the United States? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, I'm from the Midwest where lesbians' job is basically just to scare people. <laughs> and gym teacher. And gym teacher. Yeah. There was lots of vagina flashing. Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting, and it was like, and you would just look in the corner, and a girl would be like, oh, and she'd like raise and stick her vagina out, and then drop her, her 
clothes back over it. Trish, you're supposed to keep your pants on. <laughs> I know, and I couldn't help it. It just inspired me. So, as you can see, it's kind of an intense place. 